Yongnuo is a third party lens company that's been around for quite a while now. They famously made what I think is the cheapest lens ever made for Canon DSLRs, their 50mm f1.8, and are sort of doing a similar thing now in the age of mirrorless with another 50mm f1.8, but obviously for mirrorless cameras. This one's for Fujifilm X mount, and I believe this is just an APS-C lens in general. So even though it is 50mm, it's like a 75mm full frame equivalent when you factor in the crop, but this is an autofocusing lens for mirrorless cameras. It's super light and plasticky, and it's very, very cheap. I'm pretty sure it's the cheapest autofocus lens available for Fujifilm X mount. This standard version of the lens is only $135, and they do have a pro version with better build quality, and that better pro version is $300. But what we're gonna do is take a look at the standard version today and decide if for $135 this lens is any good. Is it too cheap for its own good? Let's find out. So now we're onto the physical aspects of the Yongnuo 50mm f1.8 and the first thing that kind of stands out is how cheap and plasticky it sort of feels, it sort of creaks when it's on there. So you know, that's not the absolute best, but that's what it looks like with the lens hood on. The lens hood's almost as long as the lens itself, so it adds quite a bit of length. Because of its very sort of hollow, plasticky nature, it's super lightweight, so that is somewhat of a positive. It also probably helps with production costs and keeping it cheap to the end consumer. All we really have is this focus ring, which there's not any real resistance. It'll just be fine if you have to manual focus, but it's, you know, it's not going to be very smooth or anything like that. And of course, it's focused by wire. Here's what the front element looks like. There's sort of a yellow greenish coating on there. You can see reflecting from the light. And it has a 49 millimeter filter thread size if you're going to put a ND filter or something on it. We just have their logo here, YN Lens, Yongnuo, and then some information here that's just the the focal length and aperture and then for some reason they had the USB-C port to update the firmware on the side of the lens I really would prefer to see them put that on the bottom of the lens like a lot of manufacturers do and luckily even though everything else is made of plastic at least has a metal mount so that's one nice thing and you can see our electronic contacts on there for autofocus and just to see what the lens looks like on a camera body this is on my Fujifilm X-T3 it's very light there's no weight on the front at all it actually feels like there's not even a lens mounted on the camera and this is a nice, very lightweight package if you're going to go hiking or something and you want to carry the camera around your neck, you're barely even going to feel this, really. Pretty much it. There's not much to it. It's very light and cheap and... I don't feel too bad about dropping this on the ground because I know the price point is not too high in the first place. Even though the build quality does feel somewhat cheap, we'll see that the image quality is actually pretty nice considering. There's no aperture ring on this, so Fuji users, you might be a little bit disappointed. Because of that, I use this on my Fujifilm X-T3 because it's just easier to use without an aperture ring than my the way I had my X-H2S set up. And also because this lens is just so light, I felt it just felt fitting to use it on my lightest camera. It's so unbelievably light, you think it would just be terrible optically but it's actually surprisingly good at f1.8 it's not like the sharpest thing in the world and you wouldn't expect it to be for the price but it's definitely passable for what i consider a portrait lens because of that crop factor making it 75 millimeters and the 1.8 aperture i think most people are going to be using this for portraits or if you're going to use it in a video context maybe like a talking head b camera angle the general look out of the lens is really nice there's not necessarily a color cast like i've almost come to expect with some of these cheaper lenses if anything maybe Maybe it's a little bit warm, but that's a look that I personally like, so it just actually saves me editing time. You're probably wondering what the bokeh looks like on a lens like this, and I would say it's nice and pleasing and soft. It doesn't have too much like jarring background distractions like some cheap lenses do. The one thing I would say that not only in the bokeh and the highlights, but just in general, whenever you're shooting wide open, is there is some chromatic aberration, and that's something you're just going to have to deal with. It quickly goes away as you stop it down, of course, but at f1.8, there's a little bit of green and purple fringing, especially in specular highlights in the background if you had those out of focus. So that's just something you're going to have to deal with at this price point, but it's really not the end of the world and it's not so strong that it's distracting in the image if you're not like zooming in. The autofocus works great. I actually used it on the past video, maybe even two videos on this channel for like a talking head video like I'm doing right now. And for face detection autofocus, if you're not moving around too much, I mean, it's going to do a great job. I'll do a dedicated autofocus test right now. <laughs> Thank you. 
But in general, for video, if you're not going to be doing anything too crazy, and especially photos, if you're doing like single point autofocus, like I would do for portraiture in 99% of scenarios, this is going to work great for you. But that's not to say it's absolutely flawless. I did go out of my way to keep a couple examples where it did focus on the background, but this is only once or twice in like hundreds of photos. So it's really not that big of a deal. In general, there's not much more to say about this lens other than that it's a fantastic value for a hundred and $35. I mean, you can't get a cheaper autofocusing lens for Fujifilm. Maybe there's one contender, but the, the TT Artisan autofocus lenses, specifically like the 35 and the 56, I just kind of felt like eh about them. And I felt that this was genuinely better optically. And uh, it didn't feel like a compromise, compromising the optics for the price, maybe compromising build quality. But I mean, I feel like that's, that's more passable than, you know, a lens is its optics. If you're compromising optics to get a cheaper lens, like I personally, I hate that. If you're going to compromise build quality, that's something that at least makes sense. It's a trade-off. It's like, it's still a functional good lens, but if you're still going to compromise like image quality, like no, that's all I really have to say. If you enjoyed this video, if you got anything out of it, leave a like, leave a comment down below, and I hope to see you in the next one guys. Peace.